Uh, don't mind me. I'm just uh, here catching up on my Marvel What If series on Disney Plus here, my Tesla. Uh, Tesla just released a new update, update 2021.24. Uh, there's different variations of that update going out right now. But they all generally bring the same features and updates. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about what's new in this update, what, what we got, as well as what other people got. Let's check it out right now. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for sticking with us. Um, if you're new to Tesla, congratulations, you've got your new Tesla. Uh, and if this is one of your first few updates, I'll give you some insight into what the process looks like for you, uh, as well as everybody else. Uh, the way that we typically do these videos is we cover what we got and we also cover what other people have gotten in different countries and different car configurations. All right, so let's dive right into it, 2021.24. Uh, you can say 24.x because you could have 24.1, 24.2, or in our case, we have 24.3. Let's zoom in a little bit just so we can get a little closer and intimate with these release notes. All right, so here are the release notes. Here's what it says. Uh, obviously, for 24.3, uh, we have just minor fixes, but effectively, the 24. release is going to give you a variety of different features. Again, some of which we've got, some of which we have not gotten, but we're going to cover them all. All right. So first and foremost, this being the, one of the major updates, I'm also going to cover some updates and tweaks and some design changes that we haven't covered in previous releases because we just hadn't had enough features to warrant an update video. If you're new to Tesla, just know that the way that Tesla releases updates is from West Coast to East Coast, U.S., then Canada and then internationally and international releases are going to depend on what the priority is. If the priority is something specific to that country, like Europe, then they're going to release it there first. If the priority is something uh, urgent for that country in China, then they're going to release to China first. And that's typically how it goes beyond the geographical location. The next way that software has been up updated or the way that the priority of the software is released is based on car configuration, right? So you may have a you know, long range model three with no full self driving on the West coast. And then someone else in, in Ohio might have a performance model three with full self driving. They may get an update before the person with long range, even though they're in the West coast. So there's vehicle configuration to consider. Uh, it's not really predictable, but it is predictable in terms of the geography going from West coast to East coast and then to Canada and then internationally to uh, Europe and, and Asia and things of that nature. All right. So let's dive into it. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room, which is the addition of Disney plus. Right. So we have Disney Plus here. Uh, it's basically bringing the app into the uh, sort of Tesla theater in addition to Netflix and the other and the, and the other apps that they have there. And it's the full featured Disney Plus app. So if you have, you know, an older Model S and X like this one where you have the vertical screen, uh, you're going to be able to enjoy Disney Plus. If you have the Model 3 screen or you have the new Model S uh, or potentially Model X, depending on you know where you are. Uh, you're going to have that horizontal screen that Disney experience extends that way. So it's the same experience for all. Obviously, the orientation of the screen is going to dictate, you know, what that looks like. So all the full features, you log in with your normal password um, and then you can just go from here and access all of your favorite shows, all of your all of your uh, your favorite watch lists and things like that from Disney Plus. So that's a really good addition uh, in addition to, to Netflix and the other uh, theater apps that they have there. All right. The next thing that we got uh, is dash cam improvements. Uh, this is basically giving you the ability to turn dash cam on automatically. And this just says, hey, uh, dash cam now automatically saves clips whenever your vehicle detects an occurrence of a safety event, such as an accident or airbag deployment. Uh, recordings captured are stored locally and never transmitted to Tesla. Uh, to opt in, it gives you the ability to opt in and tells you how to activate it. So what this basically means is that if you have dash cam enabled, you have a USB drive in, uh, this basically says that if an incident happens like an accident and the car deploys an airbag or the car initiates some of their other emergency avoidance systems, uh, this going to basically save automatically a dash cam footage just so you have a record of that. All right. Next one is remain connected to Wi-Fi and drive. And this is a, a longstanding issue for the Tesla community and Tesla owners, where if you're in your driveway on your property within range of your Wi-Fi signal, you'll have it on, you'll be able to use it. But what happens is as you put the car in drive, 
it automatically disconnects your Wi-Fi signal and goes to LTE. Um, OK, so that's pretty bad if you are wanting to still use your Wi-Fi, if you're in range of it or if you're using your phone as a hotspot, you have to continually sort of manually override it and turn on Wi-Fi as you drive as opposed to it automatically staying on Wi-Fi even when you shift to drive. So this is just saying, hey, remain connected to Wi-Fi when shifting into gear. And this is just telling you the options to do it. All right. Next up is this new language support, right? So there's new language support for Romanian and Russian uh, as your languages. So if you have a Tesla and you speak those languages, you can now have the UI in those languages. So that's pretty cool. All right. So in addition to this, there's some other features we're going to jump into, but I just want to take a little bit of a rewind and go back to some of the other releases. As you see, not really many up updates here, but there was a new game that was added uh, in Skyforce Reloaded. Pretty cool, sort of a, a flying shooter where you're able to just scroll back and forth across the screen, up and down and, and shoot things and avoid obstacles and, and blaster fire and all that good stuff. Uh, there's also some cold weather improvements as well. And then there was also uh, language support for uh, Finnish as well for that in Croatian, which is pretty cool. All right. So those are the more major updates, but they also made some UI updates as well. Um, as you'll see, you'll see that a lot of the color scheme is more light. So the background for these release notes, instead of being black or darker gray, it's more of a lighter gray right now. Uh, they've also added uh, a light theme, if you will, for the entertainment. So if I go to entertainment now, these icons are all pretty much white as a background. And all you see is the logo, right? Here's Disney Plus. One of the other things they did here as part of the UI update to this, these latest bat, uh, rash of updates is added preloaders to their apps, which is a much welcome update, right? So a preloader basically means that if you open up an app, there's a loading bar that shows you what the status of loading that app is in your particular Tesla. Before it was just a blank screen and you really didn't know if it was loading, you didn't know if it stuck or crashed or whatever the case may be. So now they've added a preloader that allows you to be able to go in and load your and see the status of your apps. And that applies to both YouTube, Netflix, Hulu, uh, Disney Plus, and all the rest of these ones. So if I click on this, there's the preloader, loads right up, right? Loads right up and tells me how long it's going to take my particular Tesla to load this up. Obviously newer Teslas are gonna probably load a little bit faster. Same thing applies to YouTube, click on YouTube. YouTube has that preloader. Uh, and now you're able to see how long it's going to take before your YouTube app loads. Um, and it also makes loading and actually uh, seeing and viewing the app a lot snappier now that they're preloading the assets as opposed to loading them once the app loads and then you're loading each individual tile one by one, waiting for everyone to load and it becomes a very sluggish and poor experience. So I think primarily they did this for the older models um, in terms of the processing power. Uh, the newer models probably shouldn't have any issue doing this, but also in terms of any model, new or old, that has connectivity issues where there's low connectivity. So I think this is gonna be helpful towards making the experience better for everyone because it just loads right up like that. They've even extended that to the browser. The web browser also has a preloader as well, just to make the browser load faster, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, always welcome to make these apps run a lot smoother, make the experience better for the end user. But again, all the apps now have these preloaders. All right, guys, so let's also check out the release notes for the vehicles configurations that we don't have and for the countries that we don't have. For this one, we're going to go to a website called Nota. Tesla app, which is also a good one to give you release notes, give you the insights here. So this particular uh, release 2021.24 is giving us Disney Plus, as we talked about, but there's also a very important mode that only Model 3 and Model Y owners get uh, worldwide, uh, which is car wash mode. This is a pretty cool mode. It basically adjusts the car and prepares it to go through an automatic or hand wash car wash type scenario um, by rolling up the windows, bringing in the mirrors, um, allowing it to free roll if it's on a track, um, as well as making sure that sentry mode is off and the auto walk away locks are off as well. So this is a pretty, pretty cool feature, pretty big feature uh, that unfortunately isn't available for Model S and Model X owners at the moment. Uh, to my knowledge, the reason why Model S and Model X prior to the 2021 refresh are not able to have that is because they are unable to remotely roll up the windows. Right. So to be able to use a command on the screen to roll up the windows automatically, that's a big feature for car wash. You have to make sure the windows are secured and locked in order for that to happen. And these cars don't have the wiring. They don't have the, the capabilities to do that at the moment. They can vent the windows. They can't roll them completely down and they can't roll them up automatically uh, via the via the Tesla app 
or any remote command on the actual touchscreen. So I think that's the limiting factor for those cars. I do, however, know that the 2021 refresh Model S does have this ability to roll up the windows like the Model 3 and Model Y. But for whatever reason, even those cars that are getting this update are not getting this car wash mode. It's right now it's only available for Model 3 and Model Y. So for now, Model 3, Model Y have the advantage here for car wash mode if you're running it through an automatic car wash or hand wash where you need to sort of go through a sequence of events and let the car free roll or if you just have it in neutral and you want to have it prepped with the windshield wipers off and the mirrors turned in and the door locks off, uh, things like that. So that's a big feature, 3 and Y only worldwide. The other feature that the 3 and Y got, um, as well as the new Model S, is the ability to uh, auto dim the mirrors and turn that off and on. By default, I think all Teslas auto dim the mirrors, but if you want to turn that off, you have a fe you have the ability now to turn that off via the menu here. So that's a good feature. Again, Model 3, Model Y, worldwide, uh, but also the redesigned 2021 Model S. All right, so auto dimming is there. Um, the next thing is uh, dash cam improvements. We already talked about that, uh, but then also range display. Model 3 and Model Y worldwide um, gives you the ability via the touchscreen to toggle between to toggle between um, percentage as well as range. So that's pretty cool. Talked about range, uh, excuse me, the remain connected in Wi-Fi, new language support, and then the dash cam viewer. This is, again, only available for the redesigned Model Y. It's extending them the app for uh, the sentry mode and the dash cam viewer. That dash cam viewer app was not available at launch for the redesigned Model S, but now it's available. So they have access to the dash cam app. Uh, they could record, but they couldn't actually view the footage in the car and that app is now available for them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we also have auto park for the redesigned Model S. Again, worldwide, the ability, the interface effectively to be able to go into auto park. Uh, they have that available. Since the user interface for the new S and uh, the new Model S is on the left on that strip, they needed a way to incorporate the auto park uh, UI into that to be able to enable it. So they have that now. It's a hold to, to auto park button where you hold it and it all goes into auto park from there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then now available only in China. So I think China probably had a priority international release because they have features that are going out specifically for China. And this is for, I guess, all the cars that they make in China, which I think is the three and the Y at the moment. Um, and there's the ability to navigate to change the navigation route, right? So you can toggle your route between side roads, main roads, ground level roads, and elevated roads for more navigation flexibility. So this is a new button, a new UI that even the US doesn't have in terms of the ability to navigate. And again, this, I think this is an international China-based requirement for the car to have this, and I, or either a nice to have to have it based on how the roads and the infrastructure is over in China. And Tesla's now incorporated something here for that. So that's pretty cool. All right, China also got navigation voice guidance. So they got uh, more details along the route. So more details in terms of voice navigation, in terms of how to how to navigate. So I think this is, again, specific to the Chinese uh, infrastructure uh, of, of their roads and making sure that the car is as compliant as it needs to be to be able to guide people on the roads. Okay, this is also, again, for China navigation lane guidance. So if you're in China, you're getting a lot of new features, which is pretty cool. Excited to see these in action. Uh, navigation lane guidance, and this is lane guidance, will now show more lane types. So there's different lane types in China, different than there are in the U.S., and this is going to be able to show exactly which type of road they're going to be on. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for this release in terms of what we got, in terms of what other car configurations got, as well as what other car and, and configurations in other countries have gotten in this particular release. All right, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you got this release, what you think about it, if it's useful, if there are any regressions here or anything I missed in terms of new features that I, that I didn't mention. Leave them in the comments, let's talk about it. Until the next time, enjoy your day, enjoy your Tesla.